So we lift off the lid, see what's inside. There's the feeder. Oh look, there's a few bees, not very many. The feeder's empty though. Carefully remove the top frame. There's a few bees still. Give them a puff of smoke. Move the feeder out of the way, which move very easily, uh, which is not a good sign. Uh, lift the crown board to reveal the top set of frames in the super. Again, just a little bit of smoke just to keep them down. It's all looking very quiet. Looks like they may have gone. Queen excluder. Sounds like they've gone. So what bees are in there then? Right, just right if you could watch please. No, you don't need it. It's swarmed bees. already. Swarmed. Cap in there's a honey flow. So this is a very quiet hive. Hopefully they haven't swarmed. We won't know until we get down to the bottom how they're doing. So this is the honey, and you can see the bees filling the honey, and you can see a bee in there with a the pollen on them, and this are capped so that's all okay so what I'm going to do is rather disturb those busy bees I am going to you might need to come across I'm going to go right down into This is where the nest of the bees is essentially, so this is called the brood box. Now we've only been doing this I think about five years, so we're, oops, as you can see, we're relatively new and we 
are lucky to have somebody to help us who is an absolute guru and he's been beekeeping for over 50 years. So he is our advice when something goes wrong. Now, when you lift the queen extruder, the one thing you want to check is there's no queen on there. Okay, looks like we've got lots of frames. It looks like we might have had a mouse over winter. Um, so let's just clean this off a little bit. I'll get Andrew to do that for me. Right. What we're going to do is perhaps replace any damaged frames that have been damaged over the winter. Mice do get into beehives. And eat. There we go. So have we got any brood frames, Andrew? No. So we really need to replace those. Did we have a mice guard on this one? No. Feels very light. Can I have the red tool, please? All right, see that's got chalk brood. That needs to come out. We'll replace that with a small one and that can be our varroa trap. Can you get me one small one? Oh. We need to get that pen out. Right, look at all the pollen in here. All these different colours mean the pollen is coming from different flowers. That's beautiful. Don't show the other side. Right, when you hear the noise increase, the bees know you're there. So sometimes we give them a little puff, but that's been so calm. Oh, look how much propolis they've had over the winter. Look at it. Right, this is a little bit of chalk brood. Can you see all the brood in there? We've got a little bit of chalk brood, so we need to cut out and replace frames this year. We need to keep an eye out for the queen. There's a drone. <sighs> it needs a good clean up this hive. It's needs a lot of stuff replacing after the winter. Right, we're right in the middle of the brood here, so I'm gonna ask, see if I can get out my queen marker pen. Give you that at the ready, Andrew. Have we done this one? I see the queen, quick, quick, quick. Seriously, and she's on a broken frame, she's gone under. Her wings. Oh. Oh, I can't. Okay, so the queen's in there. Now we've got lots and lots of stuff to replace in there. So we need to get lots of equipment for next week's inspection. Uh, gradually tidy up this hive because the frame she's on is broken. This is propolis, what the bees stick the frame together with and the hive together with over winter. There is a lot of housework to do here. So we know the queen's there. We're going to leave her be. The other hive was really, really, really docile. But this is the hive that when Andrew Sillily came down with no bee suit on, and bumped it by mistake, he got stung. So we know that they're up and about and fighting. There we go. Right. This um, can I have the can I have a bit of smoke just to knock them down a bit? The smoke tends to make them, as you see, go down into the hive a bit. Um, we're just going to have a look at this because sometimes you get a spring flow with a very established hive. Now, we won't take off unless we're absolutely sure. Now, here we go. And here are all the bees beautifully making honey. There we go. So we know that 
There are a couple of frames here. Did you bring the drawing pins? It's Mark Queen Sales. There we go. Where the bees are busy making honey. Now, if the hive's working well, the queen won't be up here because she's under the queen excluder in the brood box. So there we go. So what I'll do is, because this is heavy and it, they need to be protected for the sun while we're protect, um, doing the rest, I'm going to ask swap camera and get Andrew to lift this. Now you will see an increase in activity as we go down to the brood box. So if he passes me the smoker, I can be ready to smoke as he lifts. And he's going to put it diagonally on top and then cover it with the top board, top board and protect them from the sun. Make sure the bees are all okay. Right, now this is, oh Andrew's doing it, there we go. This is the queen excluder. Now, this needs a clean up first time in here this wow. spring so we need to make sure we clean this up. This is big enough for the workers to get through but we run out of smoke oh, a little bit. And now look this is a busy busy hive. We need to now look where we've um, damaged the um, cone now licking up any honey that's coming loose. Now we start from the outside and we check, okay, so they're just starting building that frame back up because it's got holes in from the winter so we need to help them by replacing some frames and we need to clean up the propolis in a minute but we're going to do the inspection first. Here is a beautiful frame of bees. Now you see that big one? Let's put the smoker down. This big one here. Where am I? You can see a big one. Now that's not the queen, that's a drone, that's the men. That's beautiful. They've got pollen and honey. Pop it back then, Andrew. More eggs is what we want. Yeah, we're looking for eggs and grubs, which shows that the queen is laying. And it's also in a rainbow pattern because if a, there's a laying worker, she'll scatter them about, but if it's the queen. Right, we need to look carefully, see if we can see the queen. Right, we can see pollen in there. There we go. Can you see the pollen? And can you see the honey? We only rest. There's a... There's a... Um, drone. We only rest it on the corner because we don't want to squash the queen. Oh, we don't want to squash any, really. Okay. Pop that down. It means a good clean up all the propolis from where they are stuck up over winter. They've been very good. Lovely calm ladies. Now bees are very good at reading your ah, this is what we're looking for. Brood, which the little grubs you can see in there, and of all different level. And this circular or rainbow depends, some people call it donut is the capped brood. In other words, the, the, the grubs have got big enough and they've capped them, crapped. they haven't crapped them, they've capped them, ready for them to hatch later. Now, if you can just lift and turn, Andrew, so I can just see if you can see the queen. Now, often the queen is where there's a lot of activity, but this is just because they've added bits of comb to the bottom here, look. So, um, that looks fabulous. If you can spot the Queen and I can't, is that her now? Yeah, I can see the Queen. And I have the pen, Andrew. She thinks she's laying eggs now. Right. Is she? No, sorry, my mistake wasn't Queen, but we'll have the pen ready anyway. Okay, let's try the next one. No, because you haven't broken the bridging comb. Bridging comb is the comb they build in between the bee space of the... Oh look, oh look, this is fabulous. That is just so beautiful. So that um, whole frame has been laid and 
we are going to have lots can you see the rubs in the corner there now we need to look out for that queen they've been beautifully calm beautifully calm I can't see her that side can you Adri mm. hold on no. Now I think she's going to be this side because there's more activity this end and that's a sure sign. Now this is our Varroa trap. Now Varroa is like um, the drone rubs. Now the, they tend to put drone at the end of a space where you leave a small frame so when that's all capped we'll cut that off and destroy it and if there's any varroa then with any luck we will have caught it but when we cut it off obviously we oh no that's a drone turn over we have to really 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 there's a drone can you see the big one there oh, no, no. um we have to be really careful when we chuck it away yeah. that we don't chuck the queen. Yeah, ladies. Excuse me, ladies. Oh, no. Oh, excuse me, sniffling. I've got a cold and you can't wipe your nose in a bee suit. Gosh, it's fabulous. Mind what you're squashing. Hold it up a bit, babes. Right. You try not to knock. That's why Andrew got stung. He by mistake knocked. Right. Make sure there's no bees on that corner. Yeah. Hold on. Right. Another beautiful frame. And look how calm they are. It is a misconception. Yes, if you piss bees off, like knocking into them, like Andrew did last week, they will sting. But they only sting as a last defence. Now this is the final frame. When we put them back, we'll try and do some cleaning up. Now there's usually on the outer less activity. Can you see there's more honey here? Um, yeah, so this is honey frame. Turn over. And can you see all the beautiful colours, which is the pollen of that each you can buy in your area, you have to be in your area, a, um, look, there we go, look, you can buy a pollen chart to work out what each, what each pollen is from, what, um, flower, I beg my pardon, just shit down here, hello darlings, hello darlings, look there, if you can see my figure, it's a big, 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 big drone. There's one with his head well in. We know there is a queen in because we're laying pattern so much drone, I mean, uh, so much grubs, so many grubs, but we don't know because um, we haven't seen her. Right, as this hive was so active, such a big colony, and had laid so many grubs, we want to prevent them to go from going to find a bigger home. So we're going to give them another box <coughs> of super so this means that they've got room to expand into more cones and they're less likely to swarm but still said every week we need to check that they aren't producing queen cells because that means they're planning to swarm because they're going to get another queen to split the colony but by doing this we know that this hive that's thriving so well, producing so many bugs, so many um, grubs, so much um, cat brood, is we're giving them more space and they're less likely to swarm. It's not always a guarantee, but that's what we're going to do. Now the spaces Andrew's putting on the end just mean the bee space is kept correct and there's right distance between it, all of them. So they're not too close and not too apart. Now you can put less combs in and let the bees grow them wider. But there we go. Right. So we're going to shut up the hive. Say thank you to the bees. Always say thank you. Bees really know what you're feeling. 
So if you're feeling pissed off, don't go down to the booze. Don't wear perfume. They don't like black. Um, and in fact, in the olden days, if there'd been a death in a fa family, you would go down to the hives and cover with them with a black cloth because they were so adamant that the bees could tell when you were down or cross or angry and reflect that feeling. Wait on the top to stop any wind blowing the hive apart and then it's time to pack up.